We got some more proof from developers that the Xbox Series S in no way holds back game design. One of the biggest talking points going into this generation of video games was how would the different SKUs with the Xbox Series S being a weaker SKU compared to the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 affect the way that games are designed and developed. Now, before we get into this any further, you guys know here and you enjoy what you see throughout this video, you find it entertaining and informative. I'd really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button to help this channel grow and help grow this community so we can have some great conversations in the comments below. And if you really enjoy this content, consider joining joining the channel for 99 cents a month and getting access to some emojis and making sure that I see all your comments. Since the release of the Series X and the Series S, people have been debating on whether the Series S is going to hold back this next generation. And I think by now it's been proven that it really doesn't and it's up to the developers on how they optimize these games for the lower powered console in order to see how well it performs. We've seen countless examples of games running great on the Xbox Series S, running at 60 frames per second games running at 120 frames per second at 1080p 1440p and generally a dynamic range between about 900p up to 1440p depending on what game it is well we got some more information here from the developers of moto gp 21 and this is a game that is a motorcycle racing game i don't know too much about this game i have never actually played the series but there was an interview on WCCF Tech and one of the questions asked here was, did you encounter any troubles while developing for the less powered Xbox Series S? Can you share the target resolution and frame rate for MotoGP 21 on this platform? And the response to that question was, not troubles at all. We were surprised by the smoothness in the development of both the Series X and the Series S. The latter console targets a frame rate of 60 frames per second and a resolution of 1440p dynamic. And then on top of that, there was this interview this week on David Jaffe's YouTube channel, which David Jaffe is the creator of God of War, as well as co-creator of Twisted Metal. And he interviewed Jeff Ross, who is the director of Days Gone. And as we know, with PlayStation this last week or so, there's been a lot of controversy on PlayStation's direction, not getting a Days Gone 2 sequel. And Jeff Ross came on to David Jaffe's YouTube channel, answered some questions. And one of the questions he answered talks about the lower spec hardware and if it holds back game design. So I'll just play to you what his answer is. It's really quick. It says, does developing for weaker hardware limit game design? No, no, I think that that's, a, that's, a, that's an excuse. Okay. It's a crutch. Uh, so there you have it. It was pretty clear cut, his answer. There's no reading in between the lines. He comes out and says, hey, developing for weaker hardware being holding back game design is just an excuse and a crutch. And this is something I think a lot of people have been saying. Not that developers are lazy, but it takes a bit more work to optimize for the lower spec or for different specs of hardware. I mean, we've seen this forever with PC gaming when you're creating a game for PC. There's so many different variants of PCs that people are playing on, different CPUs, different GPUs, different memory, all that kind of stuff. So taking into account the Xbox Series S compared to the X where pretty much everything is identical except for the GPU power, it shouldn't be that much harder to get those games to run great on the Xbox Series S. And honestly, since the release of these consoles, we have seen tons of games running great on the Xbox Series S, showing that this console is more than adequate if you're somebody who's looking to play games on a 1440p display or a 1080p display, and you don't have that 4K output to play these games, the Xbox Series S at the price point is going to be a great console for you. My Xbox Series S, I absolutely love. I mean, I play my Xbox Series S probably as much as my Series X, maybe even a bit more at times because I have it plugged in to my computer. So when I'm filming videos, I have my Series S right here, plugs into my 1440p display and it does a great job of playing everything I want. Games look great. When I'm streaming, I have the Elgato HD60. So 
I can only output at 1080p. The Xbox Series S is perfect, so at least I still get those high frame rates in a lot of the games that I'm wanting to play. For example, Outriders recently still being able to play that game at 60 frames per second, and it looks great on my monitor. And the notion that the Series S is gonna hold back games, I think is really untrue. And as we go through this generation, we're going to see games run even better on the Series S than they are doing now. And on the Series X with the dev kits being sent out late for the Xbox, now getting further into the life cycle of these consoles. Developers are going to get a better grasp on those development kits. And I believe it's just gonna become easier. They're gonna become more efficient at optimizing games for both the Series S and the Series X. Now, if we go through some of these comments, there's some good stuff here. So this person says, yeah, it can be overcome, but a lot of devs won't bother with certain cool mechanics or features because of time, budget, and staff. Case by case basis, there is a minimum spec on PC for a reason and the most demanding games have higher minimum spec targets and yeah for sure that's kind of what i said earlier there are minimum spec pcs different cpus different gpus different memories and it's going to be hard to really optimize games perfectly for all of these different specs but when it comes to the series s the fact that the cpu is virtually the same as the series x i think really does help the memory is as fast on the series s as the series x so those two things is just kind of throttling i guess for that gpu power and i'm not a technical person but that's just kind of the way i understand it person says here again it's harder work but it can be done we've seen ports of even modern games going everywhere to almost any device will it run well or will it look like trash is a different question and to that it's like you've seen games come out onto the nintendo switch that look great you've seen ports of doom come out onto the nintendo switch and it runs decently so it definitely can be done but at the end of the day when it comes to the xbox series s versus the xbox series x i think it really comes down to what games do you want to play and what display will you be playing on if you're somebody that is only playing on a 1080p display or a 1440p display generally 1440p will be a monitor the xbox series s will be more than adequate for your needs and if you're somebody who's only playing first person shooters that require high frame rates and you only need that output of 1080p or 1440p you look at all of the free to play shooters like call of duty warzone like apex legends overwatch which i don't know if that's free but it's still a first person shooter rainbow six siege you get those high frame rates in those games and when you're playing competitive shooters like that most people play those games on monitors because it's just way better to play first person shooters close up on a monitor and the series s will be more than adequate to have good performance with those games and give you a great experience anyways guys that's it for me let me know what you think about this in the comments below do you think that the lower spec hardware will hold back this generation at any point throughout this life cycle i would love to hear all of your thoughts if you enjoyed this video make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you're new here and you like what you see throughout this video i'd really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button to help this channel grow and help grow this community so we can have some great conversations in the comments below thank you all for watching thank you for your support and i'll catch you in the next video